Champion Draven will be up and available. However, uh, welcome back to season. I can't even remember which one it is because there have been so many. <laughs> most Darren of them. Necton has been B1. <laughs> yeah. Most of them in the LPL, to be honest. <laughs> Looks like Doggo happy to stick with the Ezreal that we saw in the first game. I mean, the Ezreal definitely was not the problem. It was uh, the Camille uh, just absolutely one-shotting the Ezreal late game was the problem. Definitely feel like Doggo looked good on the pick. Aside from maybe slightly overextending mid that one time. Um, but yeah, we'll see what Ultra Prime want to go for. I'd love to see more back towards the kind of carry AP junglers. like. The Zyra and the Carthus have both been taken off the board. Just I wouldn't mind brand. seeing the brand here for Hacker, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like you take the brand away from this. However, a Renekton could also indicate something like a Nidalee uh, for GLFS setting towards the top side of the map. You've got AP and AD towards the top side as well. You get this Renekton ahead. However, I feel like brand and Ezreal are a really great combo. It's not going to be the Nidalee. It's going to be another AP farming uh, jungler for GLFS. It's going to be the Lilia. I feel like if you're Ezreal right here, you feel much more confident going into this game because none of these two champions can just suddenly appear on top of your head. I will say, we've only seen one Lilia game from GLFS so far. It was the last time these guys played. He won that game with a flawless KDA. So uh, <laughs> he's uh, definitely going to be comfortable coming into this second game. Arm goes for the Kaiser once more. I won't be too surprised Seals Prime going for perhaps one of those AD mid laners, or maybe they want to find an answer to the Renekton up top. I was thinking even maybe if you want to go towards something like the Brom, it worked really well with the Ezra last time around. It's going to be Illusion for Yuakai in the mid lane. A very oppressive champion to play into a lot of the quote-unquote AP carries in the mid lane, which uh, have been left open right here because Tristana tristana has gone, Corky is gone. The other two AD champions that we usually see on the Rift is Jace and Yone, which is something that Nene could very easily play. He did play Yone last time. These two teams were playing against each other. However, I feel like this is going to be a huge stream in terms of uh, support pool right here. Never mind. It's all about the top laners. <laughs> I guess so. Camille taken off the board, perhaps indicating that Ultra Brown think maybe this Renekton could go mid lane, or perhaps that's a Camille support ban away from Vampire as well. We'll have to see what this follow up ban will be from Ultra Prime to say really where they're looking. The Cassante removed by IG, perhaps a Skarna ban could come on through as well alongside that and make sure that Jinxian doesn't have anything too safe. But no, Fiora gone. They really think this Renekton's going mid. That is actually very scary from IG, being able to flex that Renekton around onto Nene or YSKM. Fiora, Camille, both of his very aggro champions towards the top side of the map have been taken away. However, I'm looking at Ultra Prime and I'm like, you need a go button. You need something like a Rel, a Nautilus, and Leona. All of them are in play for themselves. Chinkton also, very huge uh, fan of things like the Skarner or even the Orn at this stage. I wonder what he's going to go for here. A lot of bounce towards YSKM. A lot of carry top laners have been taken off the board. You probably would be safe to go for something like a Skarna here. But no, just going to go for the Leona and leave that top lane for last pick. Wait and see what the flex is and if it is a flex before locking in the top lane. It's probably the most wise move they could make because yeah, you have okay. so many supports that can make the place happened like the Relion and Nautilus, two of them have been locked away. He's going to be the Ken on the tops of the map. Think that, like, Chinchin has played the Gragas uh, into the Ken as well. A very easy tool to actually throw him away and not allow him any access in the fights as well. Let's see what the answer is going to be. I mean, Daz is being hovered. I don't know if that's actually going to come on through. It's a bit of a solo queue counter, and it is going to be locked in by Chinchin. Uh, Kenan, very, very difficult to get away from this Nazus. <laughs> I wonder which build it's going to be, whether it is just going to be, you know, the standard Triforce stacking, or we have seen the the Emax the first strike yeah. uh, Blackfire Torch Nazus as well, that yeah. is really obnoxious to play against. I would say I'm expecting this Nazus to go more towards a bruisery build if you will you do have a bunch of damage on your team you've got illusion you've got edge you've got double 80 carry on your team as well as a brand which we know 
how much damage output that champion can have, especially since we saw GLF Fascinate in the previous game that just happened. And I just want to see where that Nasus slots in, in terms of a playstyle for the side of Ultra Prime, because they do have a lot of poke, they do have a lot of all in, but now they also have some sideline pressure. We've not seen a lot of Nasus in the LPL over the years. Last time we saw it was actually only in spring playoffs. <laughs> Shanji bringing that one to the table. Before that, it was Q back in 2022. We don't see this pick a lot. Let's see what Jigtian has up his sleeves. I can't believe how deep in the top lane ball we've gone that we've got Nasus versus Kennen up in that top side or maybe Kennen going mid in fact against the Lucian and Renekton going up so we've got a law matchup in the top side instead this is going to be an interesting game IG winning out that first one last time these two teams faced it was a 2-0 to IG they've got the momentum they've got some power picks they've flexed around in the draft let's see if they can make it work against Ultra Prime as we head onto the rift once more They tried. I've got to say that was <laughs> like they tried. the four Ultra Prime fans in the audience there doing the very best. Hey, uh, man, quality over quantity, okay? Do you know, the one the one problem with this overlay, I love the new overlay. I love that we can see stacks and whatever. However, yeah, you, you don't get to see the runes because it does the stacks, but there we go. He's going to be going airy in that top side and Scorch. That does lead me to believe that this could well be an Emax, but then again, do you want to tussle with that Nazus. Typically it's fleet when you're wanting to go for the Triforce, but I'm not going to pretend to be a Nazus top expert. However, the poke, if it lands, could be very huge to create these pockets in terms of all those ramps leading into the neutral objectives. Kind of works like a misfortune where you control so much area around neutral objectives, around tight spaces. So it could become very, very useful later on yeah. When it comes to those dragons and scuttle crab, uh, not scuttle crab, sorry, void grub fights. However, I don't remember the last time I saw a cannon mid. I know. Especially, uh, especially into a Lucian. However, uh, IG have equipped themselves with two world champion skins. One on the cannon and one on the Kaisa. And uh, we've gone back to a good old matchup in the bot lane that we saw literally in the last game, apart from... Now the Brom has become a Leona, a lot more engaged potential, a lot of two versus two potential again for uh, Ultra Prime's bot lane. Nice use of the level two spike there from Doggo. GTN getting aggressed upon up top by YSKM, but quite happy to take those trades. Obviously has that lifesteal on the Nazus, has the Doran's ring as well to get that early poke with the E using that airy as well. See how that matchup continues to pan out. Let's talk more holistically about these two comps though as our jungler's pathing opposite for the time being. It does feel like uh, this this game is going to really explode at level 6, right? With a Renekton up top and a Kennen in the mid lane. You've got to expect that level 6 will be a big moment for IG. Again, I'm looking at the IG comp and I'm like, I know what your team wants to do. Uh, as IG are looking here for a potential dive onto Chington, doesn't have flash, he has the go, so he wouldn't be able to get away from a W from the Renekton. However, that wave has been thinned out so hard from Chington's ability that GLFS is going to throw his hands up and leave. Back to your question, though. I think he got I feel one like minion out of that whole I, I feel like for IG, um, back in 2021, it was played in mid lane by LNG's icon. That's some <laughs> great overlay right there. Thank you very much. That's it's been three ago. years. It's been three years since we saw Ken and Mid. It just seems very easy to glance at IG and see what they want to do, right? Vampire had some incredible engages in game number one and then pile out on top of Elilia flashing onto you with a huge ultimate cannon as well and jumping into the back line together with Renekton. I feel like this is a very all-in kind of composition. And Ultra Prime, yes, they do have a bunch of self-sufficient carries like the Lucian and the Ezreal that can be very slippery. However, Hacker could find himself in a no man's land playing a very short range uh plus mobile carry so i think it's it's gonna be all up to him to try and find a position where he doesn't get caught 
so he can have the damage output that we saw from GLFS in game one. I have to say, it does feel very poetic that the last person to play Kenan mid is Icon, who, while he was at, on LNG when he played it, famously OMG's mid laner for like five years, you know? And it's IG's mid laner once again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's a different team. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. My brain just malfunctioned there. Uh, it's not. You remembered at all. all the grades, you know, all the grades from back then, and the the names just matched. I uh, yeah, I got lost in the source. It's uh, you know, marinara everywhere. Um, spaghetti to be specific. OMG, IG, RNG, you know, takes a while to process. Yeah, it can do. It can do. But GLFS doing a good job on this one to stay ahead of the curve, and he's. Pinging on towards that Drake. I don't know if he's actually going to go for that one instead. Moving towards mid lane, Yukai dashes away from the Swirl Seed, though, and dashes GLFS's hopes of getting into the lane. The thing with Lucian is, the more mana that you burn, the less dangerous you are in lane in terms of taking trades, as Dogo loses uh, one of his creeps right there. So every time GLFS just walks mid lane and forces the E, this is an ability that's down, which means that your trades is not, are not going to be as aggressive. Forces actually UK to go back to base. However, Arden Vampire might be in a little bit of a pickle. Okay, goes for the flank. Hacker flashes to get the stun, but Vampire flashes to get the crash down and get Hold out up. of dodge. Surviving RIG down in the bottom side. It only costs him one summoner spell. Hacker flashed in and almost lost his life to Anne. And taking a very, very favorable trade right there onto Hacker. And the flash being down here could mean that IG, with so much engaged and only potential on their team, could be looking to find that brand. Even inside his uh, his jungle, if you look at the top side, Red Buff is spawning that Renekton has been having so much priority over the top side of the map. So Lila could very easily be looking for an avenue to get into this jungle and take that Red Buff away. Certainly could be. Three grubs in trade for the Drake. It's something we've seen time and time again. Infernal Drake to start us off there. Next one will be Chem Soul. So still, oh, Chem Drake, sorry. Still plenty of uh, good soul options for Ultra Prime if that is we'll the condition the that they lean towards. Recall's cancelled the there by Doggo. The ping is inside Hacker's Jungle. As you can see right now on your mini map, GLFS level six heading straight for that red buff that we mentioned. And a very clever move from Hacker as well acknowledges the fact that he has no business walking into his top side. They have not seen GLFS for a while. Last time they saw him, he did take those scuttle crabs. So GLFS is just gonna pop that ward down. Cancels. Actually resetting, yeah. This is gonna be Hacker getting both red buffs if GLFS commits that recall. There we go, the ward they... spotted as well. They know exactly where GLFS was. Hacker gets everything huh. on this sequence of play. GLFS, I think we commended him for his decision making in game number one. How quick, how swift he was into making these decisions, taking this, uh, the neutral objectives away. However, right there, didn't quite pull the trigger fast enough for that red buff. Yuekai gets prior mid, ends up pushing him out of the jungle. And Hacker, not only does he get the dragon, he gets that gang towards the bolts of the map, but also doesn't lose anything in his own jungle. That's a small victory for Ultra Prime certainly is nice stuff from hacker that brand getting ahead once more and you can see pretty large cs lead right now in favor of hacker obviously a whole jungle up for glfs so we'll be able to close that a little bit on this clear it kept perhaps in trouble as glfs actually has to go back to his crooks now after trying to get involved in that bottom side as hacker moves up to this top lane to perhaps get a bit of action for himself but instead he's gonna go for an invade so he took the red buff before and now gets an opportunity after glfs shows bot to take the blue buff as well yeah with the help of ching chen towards the top side you see he was hovering for the nashes to push in that wave get that priority then he walks straight into the jungle for glfs to walk in there he would most likely need his support to walk up with him however as you can see vampire is stuck towards the bottom now He's going to start moving towards the top, setting down some vision to make sure that the bot lane is safe. And GLFS has lost two of his camps towards the bot side of the map, towards the top side of the map. Sorry, 300 gold in the lead for that brand. And right now, it might not look like much. However, I just want to take you all guys back to game number one, where GLFS was a quiet 
force. He was farming in Storm, he got his two items, and ever since that point, the neutral objectives were melting, everyone in those team fights was melting, and as you can see on the side of IG, there is no much tankiness. You get a couple of bounces of the ultimate, and people are going to have to retreat. Gold's still just about even, but like you say, it's a great little start. I will say, GTN. It's about 30 CS down up in that top lane. It's not not super great so far on this Nasus. He's on 87 stacks. He's come back to He's lane. He's going towards Trinity Force. So the stacks are important. You know, the AP Nasus stacks don't really matter so much. AD Nasus, the stacks very much matter. However, it does get easier to stack those up the longer the lane goes on. So we'll keep our eyes on Ching Tian and how well he comes into the late game. Nasus. An absolute 1v9 monster when you get to the late game with enough stacks. It's just a matter of how much CC they have to keep you off of the team. Well, with a Lilia, a Kennen, and a Rel, perhaps they have enough to keep him at bay. However, here's my counterpoint to that. Nessus is one of those champions that is very reliant to his ghost to try and catch up to people. The slow ca uh, counts as well. Uh, the ghost counts as well. Um, Wise game might be in a little bit of trouble here. However, everyone will get spotted from Ultra Prime. Going back to the Nasus point, I feel like everyone on IG diving into Ultra Prime might make Ching Tian's life easier into finding those angles, into actually having bodies in front of him for him to be able to hit. I don't think Ultra Prime will be taking that dive not the vampires around. No, probably not. It's just going to be a plate for Doggo. YSK, I'm trying to trade back a little bit, but there's only so much you can do in that matchup. Hacker, though goes for yet another invade in the meantime glfs will grab those grubs on the top side good play from vampire to be on this bottom side protecting uh, ysgm underneath the tower they're gonna go for the dive nicket starts it up the combo dodged Ooh, the by ysgm and doggo forced to cleanse here has to flash himself laney tp'd in as well hacker in a really awkward spot here he's just gonna go for it all in i think but the q goes wide pillar of flame Hits on to one, and that's a slicing maelstrom. Hacker down, IG, answer the play. Great play right there from IG. YSKM with a super clutch flash to get out of any danger. The TP is going to land towards the top side from YSKM as well to save that top lane tower. And I feel like IG's coordination in the entire play is flawless. You see that GLFS stop that mid lane wave from crashing from uakai then an picked it up after he stopped top lane from crashing while the play was going on the bottom of the map while nanny tp'd to save his teammates excellent stuff on the map from ig and again yskm every time he's in danger he just has the perfect answer right here we mentioned before ultra Fire, you cannot die vampire is around he's level six great flash away from the leona ultimate and not only do they get that, but they also force both summoners off of Dogo, as well as getting a kill onto Hacker, who got a... Uh, I, th I think they knew where he was. I kind of like <laughs> that he just tries warning. to hide in the corner and, and hope <laughs> nobody notices for a bit, but unfortunately... If I don't see them, they don't see me. Exactly. Unfortunately, couldn't quite land the Q, and it means that... Uh, regrettably he ends up going down after such a good early game as well. Still ever so slightly ahead. I'm a little surprised IG didn't commit to trying to go for that Drake off the back of the kill onto Hacker, but it will be Ultra Prime that pick up that prize. Six grubs for IG, though. That is a concern for Ultra Prime later on. Especially as you have so much side lane pressure as well. Your cannon could end up being on the side lane. Renekton as well. Pretty big right now. Only 600 gold up onto this Nasus, and the tables will slowly start shifting. When it comes to the Nasus versus Renek, the Nasus becomes that scary monster that we know he is. However, GLFS is looking towards the top side of the map. Vampire is heading towards the top as well. And the wave doesn't look that big. Yeah, immediately Fury of the Sands from Ching Tien, but I don't think that's going to be enough to survive Ooh. this one as GLFS just slides in and finishes the job. Nice use of the ultimates from IG. Sets up for a kill. Vampire is even here for a little bit of bonus plate gold as well. In the meantime, though, Ultra Prime see what's happened and they try and respond in kind down in the bot side. That's an ultimate out from Doggo to try and clear the way, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough. Six grubs make short work of that tower. Yeah, and Doggo's been farming up a storm towards the bot side. However, dead even in terms of the goal between him and Ann and it was the story of the previous game how far ahead Doggo got onto this Ezreal and Ann kept catching up right here. Ann is not even behind and IG who said, hey, 
Maybe their win versus Ultra Prime to end the group stage, to deny Ultra Prime access to the higher group. Maybe it was the beginning of something beautiful. These guys were put together into a very experimental team from yeah. the set of IG, trying to figure out something new, trying to figure out how they want to play the game. And so far, with how snappy their decisions of the Rift have been, there's some glimpses of hope of IG potentially returning to glory where last time we saw IG in glory was 2018 2019 it's been four years five years even since 2019 and this could be the team that brings back those little glimpses and uh it, it looks it looks good so far for IG it certainly does it's an exciting roster to be watching right now I feel like IG showing us some good stuff today showing us some good stuff towards the end of that previous group stage as well ultra prime on the other hand they started that group stage so strong then ended on a three loss streak at the end of placements and now their first matchup in that lower group and it's looking towards a loss at this rate with ig winning that first game and being 2000 gold ahead in this one but it's not over just yet the one big concern i've got from ultra prime is that Ching Tien, when he starts to lose control of a game, he really struggles to stop the bleeding. And I'm, I'm a bit worried. He has got an indefinitely stacking champion this time around, though. So maybe that's enough for him to be able to just slowly but surely bring himself back into this game. And because of that, this is exactly why IG need to pressure their advantages. Unfortunately for them, the first two dragons have gone towards the side of Ultra Prime. So for them to stuck all the way up to a soul, it would take 20 more minutes in the game. 20 more minutes for a Nasus to stack up is not a bad, uh, a bad fit right here for Ultra Prime. However, YSKM, I feel like he needs to use that spike on the Eclipse super early to try and get more advantages, create more gold deficit uh, for Ultra Prime right there. They do have the tools, they do have the damage in their kit. And IG have been much better at setting down for objectives and taking these team fights on Ultra Prime for two series in a row now, so they can definitely use it to their advantage. GLFS has spent a lot of time in lanes, hasn't he? I feel like I'm constantly seeing GLFS hitting lane minions across this one. Ching Tien getting aggressed upon by YSK. Yeah, not going to be a uh, full all-in, but just going to chunk him out in advance of a potential dive. GLFS moving in. Vampires on the bottom side of the map as well. Niket is here to potentially save his top laner, but... I don't think that they're going to be able to protect the tower. Ching Tian just fully retreats as the Herald will get the charge and potentially charge on a tier two as well. I don't think anyone will be brave enough to pilot that one, but it could perhaps well, get its see. charge. Smite is available for Hacker, so will not happen. All right, they take that ball in tier one at least, which frees up a little bit of vision. As you can see, 35 seconds from now, it's going to be another dragon that would be point for ultra prime nani just about just about misses you akai back in there and ultra prime are headed towards that dragon item breakpoints every single member on both sides has completed an item except for the support so they're pretty good in terms of first item spikes very importantly level 11 on both of these junglers i feel like their ultimates are going to be of pivotal importance all those team fights and again for ig they've got an all-in type of composition i feel like the first engage especially from viper is going to dictate a lot on how these team fights go it certainly will we could have a team fight brewing for ourselves drake spawning onto the map it's cloud soul this game which i mean glfs on lilia <laughs> you like the movement speed don't you Arn does take a hefty chunk before the fight starts. He's got a little bit of honey fruit, but why is Cam chunked as well? Ultra Prime muscle their way into the river, but a TP behind enemy lines. It's going to be Nani on a miracle flank on the cannon. Has the slicing maelstrom and finds three. Doggo gets out to safety, but Arn chases him down as Wise Cam falls in the middle of the fight. Vampire the next target, and Ultra Prime grouping up strong. A Drake taken in the meantime as IG now trying to retreat, but Ching Tien has that wither available shortly. He's trying to chase for more, won't find it and suddenly on on the wrong side of the play he's trying to escape he's trying to find somewhere to go but there are towers everywhere that are going to chunk him down on the way past the movement speed from your kite from the Arn and blaze but i think Arn might just get away from this one the great escape from ig's 80 carry 
He knew behind enemy lines to try and get out. However, for IG, this is their first dragon, and this is exactly what they came for. Mega props to Ultra Prime. They figured out exactly what IG wants to do. I mean, it's not that hard. Vampire engaged, then everybody piles up on that. And as we will see over in the replay, when the TP came down for the cannon, everyone sees Vampire. That is a triple flank, guys. A triple flank is not a flank. Somebody gets isolated and taken out of the play. It was Vampire. He is the guy that should be starting the fights for you. So, extremely clever play right here from Ultra Prime. You take the engager out of the fight and IG fall apart. So, I've just had a message from Nymera who loves his uh, very niche. So, hang on, I'm going to have to hold that thought. Why is KM? Diving in, Ching Tien, the target furious of the Sands comes in, but with Arn there as well. I don't think that Ching Tien's surviving this one. One more auto will do the trick, and Arn brings Ching Tien down. I want to quickly mention, before we go into another big fight, Ching Tien managed to get a kill onto YSKM in the previous play. There is a mission between Nasus and Renekton once you're level 11. Ching Tien, because he was the first one to get a kill on the other, he actually gets plus three seconds on his ult duration for the rest <laughs> of the game. It's not that big, but it's not that small either. Like, that's a nice little buff to find for yourself. It's essentially like a 20, 25% increase in ult duration for him. So good little pick up there. Oh, and the we're already fighting again. It's an absolute fist fight in the mid game here. As IG look for Ultra Prime this time, Hacker found great stun from YSKM and easily finished off. Dog goes next as the slicing Maelstrom finds more. IG are sending Ultra Prime packing in this series. Absolutely important fight right here for IG that can start the Baron. There is no smite on the side of Ultra Prime. And even though this Nasus gained a couple of seconds on his ultimate, it's not going to be enough to two versus five IG in the Baron pit. And uh, I don't know, is that is that what brotherly love is? Is that what you get for killing your brother up in the top lane? Nasus versus Renekton, you just gain seconds in your ultimate. Bro Let's watch this cooldown. Brotherly uh, hate. This cooldown? <laughs> yeah, brotherly hate. Let's watch this team fight again. We mentioned how Harker's position was going to be of pivotal importance, especially when IG's team wants to all in you. Being a sitting duck on a very immobile, short-range carry without summoners is something that IG love to see, and they instantly pull the TPs to dive on that. I will say, when it comes to playing around objectives, IG have been extremely quick and smart on pulling the trigger for small skirmishes or team fights to try and benefit from those. It's going to be all about those small advantages. Let's see if three seconds on Ching Tianzhou is enough <laughs> for Ultra Prime to find a way back in this game. Spoilers, I don't think it will be. It's a 4,000 gold lead for IG at this point with six grubs and a Baron on top. It's feeling pretty good, isn't it? Because look at GLF, there's two and a half items, one of which is a Seeker's Arm Guard. Nani and Arn both huge in this game as well. It's not slowing down anytime soon. This IG hype train has left the station they kept ultra prime from going into the upper group and now in group nirvana they take ig and put them against the ropes here they are not far away from pushing this to a 2-0 on ultra prime they're not done just yet but ig really making short work of the series it feels like and i want to reiterate how important a 2-0 is as well the reason why Ultra Prime is in this group is because they had games difference between themselves and Weibo. They had the exact same win rate, but games difference. So getting a very strong 2-0 start for IG makes a huge statement, especially in this group. Now, looking forward to the fights to come, for the fights to come, you will need some survivability on the side of Ultra Prime. Sure, this Nasus is ever scaling. However, YSKM has been able to keep him at bay, apart from that one kill off screen or whatever it is. You know, we don't see it. We don't know if it existed. <laughs> However, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't IG... really the one v one, right? Managed to get it in the team fight, so you know, YSKM oh, well. still kind of won the matchup. Let's Doesn't be honest. count then. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> It's going to be another Drake for IG. They've stopped the stacking. Start stacking for themselves. That's two Cloud Drakes in their pockets. And IG feeling very comfortable. Ultra Prime, though, like you say, not done just yet. Infinite scaling on that Nasus. You've got an Ezreal that's going to do plenty 
of damage later on into the game. Hacker on that brand as well, now on two items. Now we're getting to the point where these individual carries do a lot of damage. I just, when it comes to those team fights, there's so much to dodge with the with the rel diving in, the slicing maelstrom from a flank GLFS looking for that sleep as well. I feel it's going to be so difficult to function as a squishy carry against this composition. Absolutely. The one thing that Ultra Prime managed to win when IG tried to all in was when IG was actually split and they were coming from three different directions. Ultra Prime were very quick to realize that they were being flanked from three different angles and chose one target to push away, which was Vampire. And I feel like they're going to have to work extra hard right here because the most difficult part is walking into IG's team. The neutral objective, of course, will keep spawning. The Baron will come up in two and a half minutes. The next one will come up in about four minutes as well. And sure, you can let go of the Dragon because you've already stacked two and you can let another 10 minutes pass. Your Nasus will have a bunch of stacks, possibly another item that will keep him alive, make him a little bit tankier. There you go. He's just finished it. However, you need to be very aware of positioning and Fog of War really does not help Ultra Prime. So every single reset of IG, Ultra Prime need to constantly be moving their vision at least deeper into their own jungle. I'm just saying, unending despair picked up for Ching Tian. It, it works better the longer you're in the fight, right? Well, he's got three more seconds of ultimate to get value. Wow. <laughs> what twist. despair. So we'll see. If that's going to be enough to keep him in these fights, Yorikai looks for an all-in on Nani, but Culling not really going to find its mark. Baron's timed out at this point, so it makes the siege a little more difficult, as the Lilting Lullaby won't really find too much, but it's enough to get the Tier 2 in this bottom side, as Nani just holds off the pressure from Niket and Yorikai. IG are great with information they get off of the map. Nani spotted Niket towards the top side of the map. He knew that Yuakai is there as well. Only three members of the pulling the TP onto them. Nani oh. has sticked around and also has I mean, range for the ultimate. They're just going to walk away, right? <laughs> they're going to clear the path through the jungle to get away from the play. Niket and Yuakai try to escape. Oh, no, he's backing on a ward. An starts it off. He's not really the target that wants to be your engage tool. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, TP from YSK, yeah. It doesn't really lead to much. He tried. Wasn't quite the Camille-esque TP that we got in game number one. But they have <laughs> I, been trying to find creative ways to, just, uh, to flank around Ultra Prime. I just love the timing that it's right after we're like, yeah, IG's map play has been really good. TP's on to uh, absolutely nothing. Unlucky. Unlucky there from YSKM. Still, hey, IG we give him an F for effort. It. Yeah, yeah. A for effort, All the... E for execution. I, I gave him an F for effort oh I, I have the effort was good he, he said he pressed the button <laughs> you know hey listen it has to be a little bit of results based as well it would have been an a for effort if he had an insane flank but died but since nothing happened it was an f for the effort true you know that's just it's like, did, it, it, it's like i tried my it. hardest it's, hard it's like it. when, you, when you say i tried my hardest but you know the person replies it wasn't hard enough it wasn't good enough sorry Talking about being good enough, Baron has been started for IG right here, and Ultra Prime have all the tools to get to them. TP from Ching Tian oh. to join the play. Niket potentially could be put to sleep. Oh, Ching Tian just starts onto Nani. It's Niket the target. Slice of Maelstrom gets across the team. Wise game finishing the job as well. Doggo still alive. Can he carry your kind of 1v1 with on and somehow survives as Ching Tian is still full HP and still going. Hold Doggo up. finds his opposite man as Wise game trying to retreat. Ching Tian and Doggo keeping the fight alive for Ultra Prime. Ultra Prime coming up huge in this one, stopping the Baron, taking a bunch of kills. And this is exactly what we mentioned about the Nasus being a little bit similar to a Darius, if you will, in fights. The more champions want to play close range to you, the more fun you have. Ching Tian very reliant on his ghost playing that Nasus, but when you have champions diving onto you and you're very tanky, you're more than happy to just dunk on them as they come. You see that Nani takes a very deep TP, has to instantly flash through, but ends up getting one shot by the, the Ezreal plus the Nasus, and Ching Tian was holding the line onto this choke point. Yuka just about gets away with his HP bar. Doggo will E through and flash. E and flash through that wall to finish the deal. However, right now, there's a bunch of summoner spells that, that are down. Flash, very importantly, on Ching Tian. All flashes on the important carries for Ultra Prime, which means that IG have even more all-in potential here. They do. Their own flashes on cooldown as well, though. Not a single flash available for IG. And crucially, Nani's flash is a very big tool for that cannon. 
to find a good slicing maelstrom. I'm starting to keep my eyes on Ching Tien now. I feel like we are starting to get to that later stage Nazis that does take over the game. Lilting Lullaby Lilton onto one? Doggo. It doesn't really find much else. They look for the engage Ooh. instead as Vampire dives deep. Slicing Maelstrom does find three, and that's Hacker going down as well. IG, two on the play. Niket looks for a re-engage, but he's not going to find it. And that's a little bit scary now for IG to start the Baron, because even though they do have their smite holder up and available, there's so much poke coming in from Doggo's Ezreal. He does have Trusha Barrage as well. Yuka is around Niket. 4v3 here, IG in the pit. They're tanking the Baron for quite a long time. Doggo moves in, True Shot Barrage does a lot of damage. It will be Baron taken here. Smite is good from IG and now 4v5, 4v3, sorry, as they look for more. Niket goes down, Yuakai chunked, but on is the next one to fall. Doggo right on the front line, but he blocks so much magic damage with the shield and Yuakai finds another one. IG only two buffs on the map and Ultra Prime don't want to let them get away with them. Drake has just spawned in the meantime and Ultra Prime make a beeline. It will be so point for both of these teams. Ultra Prime with the two carries up on the map that will be melting through the dragon. However, Vampire is taking a bunch of vision around. I don't think Vampire can keep them at bay. Both junglers are on the way. I think it might just go down before smites are even in play. Yeah, Ultra Prime grab themselves. This Drake should just retreat. They need to get resets on Yuakai and Doggo here, but at least get something from the scrap. IG did get Baron, but it's only on two members. You still have that tool, however, the buff to pressure down those lanes. And the more they pressure, the more difficult it becomes for Ultra Prime to make these fights work for them in Fog of War. Let's look at this again. Yes, they do not have the tools from IG. They don't have the flashes to get far in. However, a beautiful <laughs> engage from Vampire and Ultra Prime just stuck up in a choke point makes it very easy for IG to get those engages going and the dumb is down. Now here it became a little bit scary, especially since Doggo and Yurikai were still up for Ultra Prime. However, very well played for IG. They'll take the Baron, grab whatever they can from this fight as well. They'll kill Niket, clutch Hourglass from GLFS as well, and they'll lose the Renekton. But two buffs available for them. Another yeah. positive play from the sort of IG and their Speed running, potentially another 2 0 being 5,000 gold in the lead in this game. I do feel like the longer this goes on, though, the more Ultra Prime are fighting back. I feel like it, it was more one sided earlier. Reset denied from Vampire by the True Shop Barrage. One thing I just want to quickly mention in that replay Ching Tian trying to be the front line there. The unending despair, it's great in theory. But the heal every five seconds only works if you last five seconds. The speed at which he was obliterated by the IG composition uh, did not leave much room for oh, hope God, there. Niket. That's a sleep onto Niket, and he's just going to go down. Big pick here for IG, potentially opening up for some tier twos. They do have the Baron. This is a four versus five, which means they can put pressure in a bunch of lane. Nani was resetting. However, he's staying back up on the map. To put that pressure onto Ching Tian, this makes it a four versus three in favor of IG towards the top of the map. But the second that Baron buff moves away, that wave will just melt in the hands of the three carries from the sort of Ultra Prime. However, if they can't somehow get that mid lane tower down, it would be huge. Oh, the replay again. Oh, no. But he, he's, oh, he's resetting on a ward. I'm guessing that a swirl seed could land. So Niket just... He was shopping. Yeah, I don't know if he just really underestimated quite how much reach IG have, whether they... Maybe he just didn't see the ward, I don't know, but either way, punished for it. Unfortunate for him. Niket has been a player that has shown some, some really good stuff across the course of this split, but has also had some awkward moments as well, as all rookies do. You know, it's sort of comes with the territory of being a newer player. No neutrals up, though, for the next couple of minutes. And it does feel like both teams are really cautious now not to overextend. This is a big win for either team. They need every win they can get if they want to make it to playoffs. And you know that both of these teams want to make it to playoffs. Absolutely. I think especially for Ultra Prime, it means a lot more. IG denied them entry to the upper group, to the Ascend group, and... I'm assuming Ultra Prime won some revenge for that. Even oh, getting the 2-1 would be huge for them. 
Ching no Tian overextends for a minion wave once again. We saw this in the first game. We see it again. He walks What's away that? with his life, though. That healing comes in as Wisecap flashes onto Hacker and deletes him. Nikke trying to keep this croc locked down, but he answers with his own life instead. On now looking for Doggo as Yuakai steps on forward. Doggo and Yuakai once again try to take on the whole of IG. This is a four versus three in favor of Ultra Prime, and they have found what they were looking for. Taking the ghost off of Ching Tian doesn't have his ultimate either. If he gets caught here, he could end up going down. Oh, no, he's caught again. Ching Tian goes down. Doggo can't do much to defend at this point, and it's sad to see the game end this way. It was so close in the fights. And then two plays in a row. We see Niket just caught in the jungle, and that leads to objectives. Then we see Ching Tian just caught farming bot, and that leads to objectives. Ultra Prime. Just gifting this game to IG. I feel like IG have one way and it's going forward with this team comp. And Ultra Prime have just not necessarily been respecting the reach that IG have, the long range from the Kai'Sa being able to dash in. I think YS game played that so beautifully. It was like he baited Hacker spells, Hacker walks up, feels too safe. Then he flashed W's onto him to stun yeah. him in place, to take him down together with his team. IG have been showing great signs of getting their play together. And again, that has been an experimental team, a bunch of players that just got put together for the sake of competing in summer. And it's actually looking better and better the more we look at it. Yes, it has been only versus Ultra Prime. That's the last two series we have seen. But it's a great start in the group. And they're going to grab themselves the soul point here as well. It's going to be a full seven dragon game. Well, that's assuming it goes on for another five minutes here. Three drakes apiece now between the two teams. I'm not and... going to lie to you, Munch. I think next Baron fight, we'll have GTs after. It might well do. The one thing I will say, Ching Tian, very good at dealing with those super minions. He can kind of just chill in that bottom side. But Niket, he just ain't that tanky at this point. Trying to face check in here. It's, this is difficult for Ultra Prime. Very importantly, IG, they've got flashes on all the carries that matter. Vampire with the engaged, Nani and GLFS. They're pulling TPs. This is the fight. I'm looking at Nani. I'm looking for that big slicing maelstrom, but IG peel off of the Baron for now. Ultra Prime doing a good job. Actually, okay, just trying to start him. I think just going temporarily insane for a second there. <laughs> Decides to pull off it in the end as now they find an opportunity, but no. They get wide on the Zenith Blade. Look at Nani, though. This is a deep, deep flank. This is an opportunity for a slice of Maelstrom. The rest of the team wouldn't be nearby, though. Ching Tian finds him out in the end, and Nani has to back away. But now, look at this. IG just start Baron again. Do you see Yuakai move over? He's got Cleanse, not TP. He's trying to deal with the super minions, and it means that the Baron is a freebie for IG. IG, great stuff right here. Getting the Baron, that means they can put pressure down on those lanes. Take the last standing gold from the side of Ultra Prime. Is that mid lane tier two that they've been looking for? Niket using his ultimate and missing onto Vampire right there was all it took for IG to turn back onto Baron, knowing that the resets are going to be coming through from Ultra Prime. And again, the information and the turnaround time from IG has been impeccable. And so far, it has netted them a bunch of kills and a bunch of barons and a, mm -hmm. a bunch of souls, if you will, in this series. However, right here, IG have all the tools again. All flashes are up and available on the members that do matter. And all they need is a last mid tier two to completely yeah. push Ultra Prime back in their base. And I feel like, you know, we talked at the start of the day about Hacker and Yuakai being the driving force of Ultra Prime. Well, Hacker's had a tough game, really difficult to function as a brand in these team fights with this much. AOE CC flying your way. Yuakai, still flawless. He's full build at this point. He's got to be the carry for Ultra Prime. But Ching Tian has already gone down. YSKM into GA. Nikkei goes wide on the Zenith Blade. Perhaps a chance of Vampire. Dives underneath the tower. And Nini slices them to pieces. It's a Maelstrom. It's a full on storm for IG as they look to end the game. Reset from YSKM. He has TP available to keep this minion wave alive. Yuakai gets onto Arn and does a little bit of damage. Doggo here as well. YSKM 
AM is tanky, but is he tanky enough? The minion wave still so strong, barrened up as IG just look to finish the job. Ultra Prime desperately hanging on. Doggo and Yuakai 2v3, but the Nexus is laid bare, and IG repeat history as they take Ultra Prime down 2-0. You could see Anne right there flashing his IG icon while playing IG Jackie Love Kaisa on the Rift. What a great way again to reignite the 2018 era with a roster that got put together for the sake of playing in summer. Incredible stuff by the squad here of IG. And again, I have to commend them on how fast they could process information into actual action on the map. They would find someone overextending on one side of the map that engage on them, take numbers advantage. They'd see the jungler opposite to where the Baron spawns. They'd start the Baron immediately. I feel like this squad has what it takes to possibly dream of making IG great again. We'll have to see a lot of steps on that path before they can really live up to the hey, 2018 start. version of IG. I mean, that's a world championship roster we're talking about. So I don't want to get too excited too quick. But certainly a fantastic...